Motion by helmet. Welcome to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township, you know, those municipalities that make laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that, well, you just recently elected. <laughs> and the commissions and the committees that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not, and the result can be... Taxing. Situation. Or it could be very humorous. Ha uh -huh. There usually is humor in these meetings. Did you ever notice that? Yes, and it's rhyming cousin. Yeah. Would be. <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to say rumor again. I did, I <laughs> did. <laughs> it's a repetitive thing here, folks. And then, I mean, this guy, he just won't give up. Break, break the pattern and... Yeah, there it is. Slides downhill. Splat. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the humor bubbles to the top or it sinks to the bottom, and That's we drag true. it out, don't we? That's true. And uh, so you will discover in these meetings, uh, first of all, an abbreviated version of what the meeting is. If you sit in a lot of these meetings, you notice they're quite long running. Some of them run hour, two hours. Yeah, this I've is the Reader's Digest hours. version, folks. It's <laughs> the condensed <laughs> version of Reader's Digest, the condensed, condensed version. <laughs> I see. <laughs> right? Okay. Well, let's talk about a couple of meetings that occurred. The first one is the Charter Township of Oxford Board meeting that they had of trustees. The second one is the Oxford Village DDA meeting. Shall we? We shall. Okay. Proceed. Uh, proceed. Okay. The Charter Township uh, consists of Bill Dunn, who is the supervisor of the township, uh, Joe Ferrari, who is the treasurer, uh, Curtis Wright serves as the uh, clerk, and uh, Jack Curtis, who is a trustee, serves on the board. Uh, Margie Payne, who was, by the way, out of town, but she was excused for being out of town. And now his halo starts to glow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's a halo, but anyway, <laughs> could have been a brick coming off that building. But anyway, uh, Patty Durr, she serves on the board, and I do too. You do too. I do too. <laughs> and uh, Kelly Richter served as the um, uh, transceiver, or the individual that transcribes okay. the meeting. Did a good job. Uh, this is for the November 14th meeting. A call of order was good. Uh, respect to the flag was the next item. The agenda for approval was approved immediately. Consent agenda was also approved immediately. Notice how we're ripping right through this one. That's right. Yeah. You didn't get all the detail on the consent agenda, did you? No. Would you like to see it? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the reason why I didn't give him the detail. He didn't want to see it. Anyway, uh, public comment was the next thing, uh, not on the agenda. Ron Davis, who is the uh, Director of Parks and Recreation, he stood up and gave a report. Uh, first thing he was concerned with, of course, is the election failure of the millage proposal that he had on the ballot. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah, it was a close call, not lost by a few hundred votes, I understand. But uh, it will affect the parks and recreation in terms of the way they operate. Mm. And uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, Ron has a very tight budget in what he deals with has really not asked for any operating monies in the past. Um, but is that a point where but, but that the guy parks does have expanded? A terrific job. Yes, he does. A uh, great job for the parks. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's an issue that unless he gets some funding some way or another, um, he can't maintain the staff that he has and keep the parks open, uh, all of them at the same time. So there is a um, election coming up, or this could be a special election, uh, coming up in about two years. So he, he may or may not be on that ballot. I don't but, think uh, that's a special election. I think that's the presidential election. <laughs> yeah, it's a special election, though, for the Parks and Recreation. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I call it that. But I don't know if the presidential election is, is such they a special one. one would they have one before that? No. Okay. That would be two years. All right. So anyway, we'll have to see what happens there, folks. But anyway, the rest of the report... Um, he talked about the building construction that's going on for the Senior Center and OCTV building. He said the windows are in, the roof is on, not the roof, but the sheathing. Uh, roof should be on by now. By the we time were we over there the other day. They've done a wonderful job. Yeah, who's we? Bill Service, Terry Stiles, and myself. I wasn't invited. What's with that? Uh, <laughs> okay. We weren't going to tell you, but... <laughs> yeah. You just couldn't keep it a secret any no. longer, could you? No. Okay. <laughs> and how'd it look? It looked great. Okay. And uh, I guess all they have to do now is put the electrical and plumbing and lighting and mm -hmm. uh, drywall and insulation. Mm -hmm. and, and the heat. Partitions. And the air conditioning. Okay, it's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> see, see, eventually he works around to it. You but know. we did have a roof over our heads. <laughs> right. The snow didn't come through, though. No. Okay, that's a good thing. You got to cover everything up. So anyway, so he gave the report on the building and making pretty good progress. He also did talk about a driveway that he's going to look, uh, come in on Seymour Lake uh, Road into the uh, parking area where the OCTV building would be rather than going the, the along main way. The main entrance. Main mean. entrance, right. rather than coming in the main entrance. Yeah, you got it. That's the way it is. Okay, so and I, uh, Jim Sharp, who's the engineer, went out and kind of sized it up and as to what the cost would be to do that. Uh, so that might be an item that they can include in this. They have the funding for this part of it. Um, also, skating center, he said, is going to be limited in terms of what they do. They're going to put down the cement, um, you know, for it. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have a water system there, so the fire department, Pete Schultz, has agreed to bring his trucks in and, and fill it this year. Okay. And uh, get it going, but there's not going to be a warming house, so bring your own tent, bring your that own hand been, warmers. That would have been part of that millage, wouldn't it? It, it would have been, yeah. And another thing is the Powell Lake Playground is something that's kind of put on hold, but... Uh -huh that will also be done if they can find the funding somewhere down the line. So that's pretty much what Ron Davis had to say. Next thing was the public hearing. They had an SAD meeting. You know what the SAD is, right? Yeah. Special Assessment. Sad but true. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Special Assessment District. <laughs> yeah. And what it entails is uh, weeds in Squall Lake and Clear Lake. And uh, there was one resident who objected strenuously to this SAD. He didn't uh, agree with it, approve with it. He said, you know, by putting chemicals in the lake, it's going to kill all the weeds, which in turn will cause all the fish, fish to come flopping out and land on, land on the beach. Um, he's not happy with it. Is he saying, take one link out of the food chain and it all collapses? Right. <laughs> there, there has been, though, scientific evidence that it isn't posing any problem. Just about all the lakes in this area, you know, use this process or this mm -hmm. procedure. And uh, it has cleared up a lot of lakes. I know on uh, Oxford Lakes, uh, over in our area, um, the water is nice and clear now. Oh. And there are fish in there. Oh. Um, I've seen bass and pike that eat the bass. <laughs> Those kind of things. Whales that eat the pike? No, no, wait a <laughs> uh, no whales right now, but anyway, it's a pretty clean lake over where we're yeah. at. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, they don't have motorized vehicle or vehicles, <laughs> motorized boats. I remember years ago, they used to have the uh, Michigan what is it? Uh, uh, ski boat races out there. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, those had to have motors. They certainly did. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine an electric motor? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Could be a problem. Oh, this yeah, a right. A lot quieter. <laughs> so anyway, this gentleman had a, had the ability to speak before these, uh, this board, um, but it was pointed out that the township really doesn't have a, a pony in the race, <laughs> that they don't really, they're not the implementer or the beginner of the SAD program it has mm -hmm. to be taken up with a uh, petition. Oh. And it requires over 50% of the residents uh, in order to get this to go move forward. And they don't have that yet. They do have it. They do have it. Yeah, they do have the 50, I think they have 51 or 52%. So what becomes, what becomes of the objectors? Objectors. Uh, they become non-objectors. <laughs> I see. They become taxed. <laughs> yeah, they become very frustrated in the I corner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Twiddling, <laughs> you know, they have a they have an issue there that well, just can't be resolved. Their, they had to give it their best shot. Right, and yet the township has no control over it. I mean, right. it's according to state regulation that they move forward with it because of the number of residents that have signed up for this petition. And with that, we'll talk more when we come back right after this. Hello, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stein. And together, Terry and I, we host a program called Oxford News This Week. We cover all the news in our community, your backyard. Addison Township, Oxford Township, the village of Oxford, and Leonard. And you can catch us on Mondays and through Friday. Through Friday. Right? Right. Noon, 6.30 and 11 p.m. Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, Sunday 6.30, 6 .30 and 11, 11 p.m. <laughs> so don't miss it. Watch us on YouTube or our Charter Channel 191 or at t Channel 99. We will see you there. <laughs> Welcome back to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the uh, <laughs> Charter Township of Oxford, the uh, trustee board meeting that was okay. going on. And uh, we talked about the public hearing and the gentleman that was upset over it. And uh, we did talk about the petition, the way that works. Then the next item they did talk about was fiscal year 2019 CDBG. 
you know what that is? Community Development Block Grant. Boy, this guy is getting better all the time, I gotta tell you, folks. It's a test every week. He made it past his ABCs. He's now into <laughs> CDBGs. CDBGs. Right. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, for that fiscal year, um, CDBG, that will be coming up uh, on the tail end of this under new business. Second uh, reading, uh, commercial peddlers, solicitors, and transient, transient vendors. People Trans that goes, out yeah. of towners. Yeah, out of towners. <laughs> Gypsies. They come to your door, pound on your door, look in your windows, those people. And guess what? There is a new ordinance in place oh. that will become effective December 21st, I believe it is, of this year. That will? That will prohibit, unless they're registered. Ah. And they have to register with the clerk in the township, at which time they'll be given a um, badge uh, indicating who they are and that they are registered. And also they'll be given a list of you folks that do not want to be solicited out oh. there. So you let the uh, clerk know they have a do not call, and now they have a do not pester. They do, <laughs> do not pester. And they can also get a, a small sign that will go on your door. Um, they wear a dog? No. Uh, <laughs> they wear alligators, skunks, whatever it takes. <laughs> Keep them away. And uh, when you get that tag, you know, for your door, uh, the sticker, or whatever they're going to provide for you, the postcard, bulletin board, placard, <laughs> and whenever you get that, then they'll take your name, address, and everything, and make sure that these vendors also know it so that they should not go to your door. A violation could be expensive to the solicitor that's attempting to How go to your door. How expensive could it be? Um, well, it could be really expensive. I'm not sure what the um, expense would be, but yeah, unless it's little Susie that comes to the door and say, Mister, would you like to buy this? <laughs> you know, uh, she doesn't need a license, by the way. Oh, why not? Uh, because uh, she's little Susie's aunt. And I see. the aunt runs the government. <laughs> no, that's the way it works. <laughs> you haven't learned that yet, huh? Okay, that, that's all a rumor that this guy... Her badges are brownie just, uniform. <laughs> yeah, little, little brownie <laughs> uniform, yeah. yeah. Be nice to the little brownies out right. there. And uh, also the Weeblos and all the others. And the Girl Scouts. Right. Yeah. And by the way, they're not required, you know, if they're selling lemonade, that kind of thing either. To have a license. Oh. Well now, then. you would if you had a license. I Even mean, if, if it's tried. a brick and mortar building? <laughs> 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 and I, I think uh, also other people that are exempt would be uh, political. You know, people that are going door to door, you know, running for an office. Uh, they're also exempt from the uh, registration. Uh, the other people that would be exempt would be religious organizations as well. I see. And uh, that and your mother-in-law. That eliminates everybody. about 50 percent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> so anyway, so th that was pretty much approved, went forward. So remember, December 21st, now you folks do not want to have solicitors get a hold of the clerk, who would be Curtis Wright, uh, at the township level, and uh, let them know. Fire department was the next thing. Um, Assistant Fire Chief uh, contract was due for renewal. Dave uh, Creech, there's a short discussion on it, and he was approved. Memorandum for uh, understanding. Now, the uh, memorandum for understanding was a agreement oh. for the Firefighters Union IAFF Local 4763. I think that's he, a memorandum of understanding. Yeah, of understanding. I said of, of understanding. No. I didn't. Are you sure? You said four. Instant replay, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, we don't have that. It's always anyway. a fight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know what I meant? More or less. Okay. <laughs> How much more? It's a non-binding <laughs> non document. How's that? <laughs> okay, that would be it. Anyway, it was an agreement that they had with the union, and they had to right. agree with that. And they did approve it to go forward. Recommendation to hire Richard uh, Nov Novorek uh, to fill a vacant uh, for firefighter paramedic position. Oh. Uh, nice young man. He's uh, been volunteer for a number of years, I understand, on a part-time basis. So he's an EMT? He's an EMT, and uh, he was approved. Good. So went forward. The other one was uh, Sarah Racer. That was a recommendation to promote to lieutenant EMS coordinator. And there's a short discussion on Sarah. And the, I want to say the president of the union also had a few words to say. Um, and it was immediately after that approved. So unfinished business, Squaw Lake, Clear Lake, SAD. We're back to it again. Squaw Lake, Clear yeah. Lake, SAD. Yeah. SAD. Take care of those nasty old weeds. And they did. They approved 
to go forward with the SAD. Good. So that will happen. New business, uh, grant funding. Uh, the treasurer Ferrari made a um, report or a quick um, resolution of the grant funding required uh, for the township. And then that was approved in a CDBG funding for 2019, which is Community Developed Block Grant, right? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was approved. <laughs> Look what I learned from you. Well, I don't think that's the way we learned it. But anyway, uh, that was approved. And then the last thing that they discussed was electronic payroll. Did you know that some people don't cash their paychecks? When they don't, it causes all kinds of ha havoc, you know, with the people at the when clerk's the office. that are making out these checks for everybody. Well, so, we have, at, at our station, mm -hmm. we have, through the township, electronic uh, payment. Right. But and not, but not for individual things like mileage and like right. sundry expense, let's say. And that's all I've ever known is electronic. And uh, have you had any problems Being so with it? so young. <laughs> <laughs> have you had any problems with it? No, never. Okay. Well, apparently they've had their issues where people have caused problems. You know. Oh, is, it, is, it a pro is it a problem if they get a paper check and they don't cash it for it a is. long time? Oh, sure. I know I accumulate a couple of mileage checks and before uh -huh. I go to the bank, but the I truth don't, I don't keep them that long. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Right. You're one of those. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. So anyway, you folks will understand that it's been switched over to the electronic pay roll for everyone now. So, well, no, no paper checks. No paper checks at all. Not even for mileage or sundry expense. Nope. Electronic checks. All the way. All the way. Accelerate. Put your foot to the battle. And let it go. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> okay. Boy, uh, for that, more, that was my source of petty cash. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> for more detailed information, you folks could go to OCCTV.org, our website, and click on. Now I've got to make a withdrawal. But it, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do these folks click on when they get to our website? Do you know? Yes, I do. What? <laughs> OCCTV.org. And you click on programs, and everything is in reverse, date order. I'm just and pointing. there's a drop-down menu just in case you want to slice and yeah. dice by a particular area, like oh, the Oxford Board of I'm Trustees. I'm just pulling the string to get him going here. <laughs> anyway, and that's now I won't it. Stop. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, that takes care of the township. Now let's talk about the Oxford Village DDA. Uh, Pete Schultz serves on that board. Nicole Ellsworth uh, is the vice chair. Dorothy Johnston, uh, Sue Oles, Rod Charles, Susan Schur, but she was excused. She wasn't there that evening. Myself and Joel Frost. And by the way. Joe Frost is the new president of the Village Council. Congratulations. Yep, that's pretty cool. Um, and on that board also is um, Dave Bailey, who is the pro tem, mm -hmm. for you to call the vice council. president of the Village Council. And um, Maureen Helmuth serves on it, and Eric Dolan, and a new member, Kate Logan. Ah. Did you get that? Yes, Got I it. did. Okay. Put it on a stack of yellows over there, so you remember. Now I'm keeping this one on the whites. <laughs> in the whites? <laughs> Gotta make that a whitey. I gotta yet. update my bulletin board. <laughs> Is it gonna be a whitey tidy or just a whitey? Uh, we keep it loose here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that, we'll come back, folks, right after this. Hi, I'm Debbie Wren from Daybreak. And I'm Terry Stiles from Daybreak. <laughs> yes, you can see us every day, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. We are here to talk about what's going on in our community, what our businesses are doing, mm -hmm. what our businesses have to offer. We have lots of information to provide you. So don't miss us Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. See you there. Welcome back to Miss by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. We're talking about the Oxford Village DDA meeting was held on November 19th. Glenn Pape was there, and he is the executive director of the DDA. And they did the pledge, of course, public comment uh, on non-agenda items. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody looked at their shoes. And, no? Uh-uh. Agenda, November 19th was approved. Minutes for October 15th. There were two typographical errors pointed out by Pete Schultz. And uh, with that, uh, it was approved with the corrections. Okay. Pretty well done. Uh, consent agenda, bills for November. Got this? $14,692. And? And 49 cents. Wow. Oh. Get, your, get your wallet out. You could do this. Yeah. A okay. little moth will fly out. <laughs> <laughs> A big pterodactyl will fly out. <laughs> I know. Okay. So that was approved with corrections. And uh, let me see. Consent agenda, 
we did talk about that with the bills and the, re the uh, revenue expense report was the next thing, which consists of the police report, the DPW report, and the code enforcement report, and okay. the executive director's report. Good. Pretty much a stack like that, and it was uh, received and filed, and it was all approved. The next thing was the unfinished business, which was old business, uh, board of officer selection. Now, here comes the fun. Uh -huh. Remember, the last meeting that they had last month in October, uh, Pete Schultz was elected president, yeah. her chair, and Nicole Ellsworth was put in the position of vice chair. Mm -hmm. Now this time, there were two seats open, and Susan Oles was accepted for treasurer, and Elgin Nichols, drew the short straw, got secretary. So, oh no. That's pretty, oh no. <laughs> You're going to spend all your time taking minutes. <laughs> I tried to hide under the podium, but or the desk, but couldn't do it. Couldn't fit. Used to be able to, oh. not anymore. But anyway, DDA uh, Chamber Holiday Events Coalition was the next subject that came up. There's been no resolution with that so far. In other words, not a coordinated effort to bring the two groups together at this no. point. Uh, extension uh, of a PUD, which is a planned unit de development. De development, right? Well, you're getting sharp in your old age. Emphasis, emphasis on age. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, what happened here is that there was an error in recording property uh, resulting in a cloud on the title of the property that the DDA owned. A cloud? It was a cloud on the title. They say you can't, you can't do anything with that title or with that property because unless it's, it's clear. clouded? Yeah, it's clouded with debris. And the debris is that the couldn't description they just, was Couldn't wrong. they just say there was an error? Yeah, <laughs> but it's called a cloud on the title. But anyway, they, uh, they, uh, the description was wrong. And it was the fault of the uh, village, or the DDA village probably to be ultimately responsible for. Mm -hmm. And this happened many years ago, and they just never caught it. And because it was government-owned property, it never was on the tax rolls, so uh, actually the county wouldn't have caught it either. Oh. <clears throat> but Dave Weckel, who's got this project going over on Burdick Street, building construction, can't move forward and get financing until this title is cleared. And he's building those office buildings, isn't he's he? He's not doing anything until this gets cleared. Wow. So, so that was approved to go forward with it. But see, he needed need an extension now on the PUD because his PUD ex uh, extended to January 1st and concluded then, So which is but coming that's fast. Easy, but that's understandable now. Right, it would okay. be. And it's the fall of the village, so they, we did ultimately agree to go forward with it and recommend to the uh, village council to go forward with it as well and approve it. Um, and we gave a new date of July 1st, 2019, okay. in which he can move, move with it. So, good for Dave Weckel. I, I when, think you, Dave, when you say he can move with it, he can go he forward, can actually start get his bulldozers. But he can't do anything until his then. His chippers. Well, he can't until everything is, well, he can. He can move forward with some things. Like parking lot, those kind of mm -hmm. things. But not the building. In preparation. He could actually do the footings for the building and everything, too, if he wanted to. He's got till well, July as long as your 1st. footings are in the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> footings are in the door. <laughs> Rest is all downhill. <laughs> uh, hopefully uphill. <laughs> That's what he'll be doing. <clears throat> Dave Weckel has a pretty good reputation, though, yeah, as a builder he he, in this he, town. When he <clears throat> comes to the planning commission, all his T's are crossed and his yeah. I's are dotted. You can tell the guy is really frustrated with this, but... Uh, he's continuing to move forward with it, yep. and he he's anxious to get it going. So, uh, you, If you folks travel down Burdick Street, you'll see it all staked out in that area. Yeah. And that would be the property that we're talking about. New business. None. No new business. Uh, board member um, comments. Uh, what I would like to say here is there were a few uh, comments made by the board members, but you should pick up OCCTV.org and see what's going on there and pick up the detail on it. Right? Why didn't you say anything? <laughs> because I want people to be curious and I want them to go to our website. Now you made I me curious. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting to hear something. When here. was the last time you went to our website? Do now I, you're going to rush to get out there. That's, I went there yesterday. You did? What would you do out there? I saw what was uh, updated. And? And it was. Oh. Did you update it? No, we requested it be updated. Oh. By who? By our website people. Okay. Do you know who they are now? Yes. <laughs> this is interrogation time, folks. 
But one of these times, we're going to take that stack of yellows that he has over there, and we're going to start from probably the bottom and work our way up. Oh, which was, ought to take about a week. I was planning on building a small campfire. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't destroy um, public documents. Uh, no, they're not public. They're mine. <laughs> See, that's what a lot of these political people think. It's mine. So, mine, all oh, mine. <laughs> But don't you folks let them get away with it. Like those seagulls in Nemo. <laughs> yeah, all right. Mine, mine, mine. Yeah, right. That could happen. So anyway, <laughs> um, they asked for extended public comments. Nothing. <laughs> Same silence that we had a while back. Not even a short one. Not even a short one. <laughs> right. Uh, next meeting is going to be Monday, December 17th. And by the way, that's going to come quick. And if you folks haven't done your Christmas shopping, you better get started soon. Yeah. And we have, we're gonna, by the time you see this aired, Black Friday will have been finished kaput. And you will have already had and an so opportunity. so a lot of bank accounts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably yours out there. Um, I want to say that uh, there's something coming up, though, um, next week when, while we're airing, would be the Soup and Sweet uh, scro Stroll. Soup and Sweet Stroll. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hmm. And it's speaking of mouthful, the soup is delicious. They have little cakes. Uh -huh. They have all kinds of little desserts. And uh, what you have to do is you go. What about, you have to do is button up your overcoat. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be chilly. No question about it. But you know, soup is hot, and there's lots of uh, refreshing, uh, warm drinks. Wonderful. You know, they have out there. And uh, but you have to get a ticket, and the tickets are five at five forty-five p.m. located in Centennial Park. And go there. How much are the tickets? You know what? That's a good question. More than a dollar and less than... 50. Probably. <laughs> it's not going to be that high. It's pretty reasonable. Oh, I said less yeah. than 50. There's family tickets you can get. And right. there's single, singular tickets you can get. Cheaper by the dozen. If you have a family, it's going to cost you $2. If you're just by yourself, it's $30. <laughs> so get <No>. a family. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> <laughs> you're running right out and adopt a family. <laughs> yeah, bring them in. So anyway, the uh, uh, soup and uh, sweet stroll is from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. But there's lots of other things going on, too, by the way. There's going to be choirs uh, singing from Oxford High School. When are they going to uh, light up the uh, Oxford Christmas tree? That's going to be the day, I think. I that'll, see. that'll be the day. That'll be the day. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure that'll be the day. Could have been a song. Could have been. <laughs> I think it was once, wasn't it? Well, yeah, a long, a long okay. time ago. All right. So anyway, that's going to be from 6 to 7 p.m., the Oxford High School students. Then from 7.10 to 7.20, you're going to have Oxford High School choir soloist uh -huh. perform under the direction of Christopher Card. That should be very interesting as mm -hmm. well. Uh, then the OMS uh, Oxford Middle School choir performs under the direction of Jan Flynn from 7.25 to 7.35. Lots of music going on. You betcha. Christmas jingle jingle. And those choirs are good. They are. And they will have, I'm trying to think, 740, 750, Clear Lake, OES, Lakeville, and Leonard. Super singers. They will leap tall buildings with a single bound. Super well, singers. Oxford version of Lollapalooza. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> and they perform in the, the direction of Peggy Mueller and uh, Stephanie uh, McConey. It's 750 to 8 o'clock. Community sing-along. Hey, bring your pipes along. Bring my pipes. Yeah, this guy has good pipes, too, so he so. needs to bring them along. Yeah. Well, what's the, with that, what's going on? Not much. No, no. <laughs> not much. <laughs> we do have three meetings, and uh, on 12-3 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Zoning Board of Appeals. And on 12-4 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Planning Commission, one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. And on 12-6 at 5 p.m., the MDOT presentation will occur at the library. So oh. show up if you want to find out what MDOT is planning for downtown Oxford. M24 is going to get torn up. You folks are going to get torn up if you don't know about it. So yep. there's a good opportunity at the library. That's at what time? At 5 p.m. On what day? On 12-6. 12-6. And the other thing, too, is the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for the Village. Do check and make sure that it's going to have that meeting. That's true. 50% or other percentages. Sometimes they just don't have enough to... Have a meeting. Yeah, I and think they don't. <laughs> I think there will be a meeting this time, from what I can gather, concerning the Weckl project. Okay. But I, and this could be just just a rumor, though. So speaking of rumors, but, but ZBAs in general fall under that category of maybe they mm -hmm. are, maybe they're not. But yeah. yeah. Speaking of rumors, I'm Elgin Nichols, and I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here on Menace by Minute. See you then. <laughs>